Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're gonna make this ring in Blender, but we're gonna use a new Blender add-on called JewelCraft. It's been around for a little while. The first couple iterations of it I tried to use about a year or so ago, I was really having a problem with. Um, it is now uh, upgraded to version 2.5. And I think for the most part, for about half my modeling, this tool comes in very handy. And I just want to show you, uh, based on some recommendations from another subscriber uh, who suggested I do a video on this, I want to show you how easy it is to work with, especially if you're doing symmetric designs. So let's get started. If you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. And anything you can do to share this video kind of helps my channel grow. And I finally reached 1,800 subscribers, and it's all because of you, and I appreciate all the help you've given me. Oops. Okay, so for today's lesson, we're going to get started on using uh, a special tool. We're going to use JewelCraft. It's designed by a gentleman named, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, I hope not, Mikhail Rachinsky or Rachinsky. I'm not sure if I messed that up. And if I did, Mikhail, I am sorry. But he created a tool for Blender and he is currently up to version 2.5. And I will put a link to that on GitHub where you can download it. This is the GitHub page. You can get to it through this link here or through the link below. And then just come down here to download for whatever version of Blender you're currently using. I'm using 2.8. So you're gonna download, if you're using the same version, this version here, and then run through the installation process of adding uh, an add-on for Blender. If you haven't done that, um, if you have any questions, let me know. I will make a quick video for that, but I believe I do have some uh, some quick tips on installing add-ons. Once you've got that installed, you go back to Blender and you should have it activated, and then you will have a JewelCraft tab in your Blender panel. So once that's done, then we're going to get started on using it. Now, most of Mikhail's lessons are in Russian, so for those of you who don't speak Russian and want to learn how to use this tool, um, thanks to a, one of my subscribers, I'm going to start using this again. Uh, some earlier versions of it didn't work well for me, and some of the designs that I do, it won't work at all. But um, for some things, it works really, really well, and I want to show you how to use it really quick. So we're going to design a couple quick designs today. Okay, so I've got my key controls here, so you can see when I press a key or use a mouse button, it'll show up in the bottom right corner right over here. and let's start a simple design of a band and we're just going to make a round band uh, non-eternity and I'm going to show you how to get started with this first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my diamond here by deleting that and I'm going to create using Mikhail's JewelCraft tool which I'll just call JewelCraft we're going to come down and we're going to select a ring size to do this I suggest you open the panels that I have opened here gems jeweling object and curve I'll get into waiting just like Mikhail has or you can go watch his videos on on his YouTube channel and he does cover these I don't particularly use these but uh, for what I'm gonna do here today I'm just gonna suggest you have these tabs open with those open I'm gonna select ring size press the jewel craft curve uh, ring size button select ring size make sure that's got a check mark in it um, whatever country you're working with I'm, I happen to be in the US and then I typically design my rings I start them at a size 7 press OK and it puts a curve or a circle on your screen that is a size 7 now I need to make the beef of the curve and there's two ways to do this I will do it um, the old-fashioned way how I used to do it I'm going to add in a cube so shift a and I'm going to add in a mesh come down to or go up to cube and then I will select my item tab and come down here and size it to what I want two millimeters by two millimeters by tab two millimeters and now I have a two millimeter cube that I'm going to size along the X axis which is the red axis I'll press S X I'm gonna make that about that long and zoom out a little bit now it's two millimeters by 32.7 millimeters it doesn't really matter what we have there but I'm gonna make this just a little bit thinner along the z-axis I'm gonna make this a 1.5 millimeter 
ring thickness and I'm actually going to increase this to 3.5 millimeters along the y-axis. <clears throat> so now I have this bar that is substantially wider than it is high. Now you have to add in loop cuts to this before you can adjust it around a curve. I think I've covered that before but just in case we're going to hit tab and go into edit mode. With everything selected put your cursor over the object and press Control R and you can see that we have a yellow line or a yellow loop around that and now you can type in a number I'm going to type in 200 and that puts 200 loops into that square or that, that bar. I'm going to press the enter key twice and then press A to select all of them and then I will tab back into object mode. So now I have this object with literally 200 cuts through it that allows it to be bent on an angle. So now what I want to do is I want to take this, grab my curve, actually I don't have to do that, I'm just going to take my, my cube here, I'm going to come down to modifiers which is a little wrench button and we're going to add in a curve modifier and I'm going to select the size curve. With the size curve you can see now that I've taken my, my block or my ring and I've sized it along that curve so that gives me a band that doesn't cover the entire curvature of the ring size. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to Jewelcraft, which is right here, and I am going to say stretch. But before I stretch it, I am actually going to select one or the other. The little up arrow makes the ring size on the inside of the band. And if I press the down arrow, it puts it on the outside. Mikhail's also added this stretch tool, so if I want to, I can just hit the stretch and it closes the entire curve. Basically, it um, extrudes it and makes it fit into that circle. Once that's done, I have this perfectly round band and it is squared off. So without going any farther into detail with this band, what I want to show you next is I want to make this an object because we want to apply its modifiers. So I'm going to hit the function key and A and we'll come down here and apply modifiers. So that's how we do that. Now if I got rid of this curve, the ring curve, I can delete that and my object is perfectly round. If I enter tab mode you can see it is a solid object. Now there's another way of doing this. Um, Macau, uh, he, in Jewelcraft you can do it a different way. So I'm going to go and do a new one like that. We'll get rid of my diamond and I will press shift A to add in an object. Let's go turn on my key casts. So shift A and we're going to add in another cube. I'm going to size this cube, go down to item, select the size and we are going to do this again. We're going to do two millimeters by two millimeters by two millimeters and I'm going to extrude that along the x-axis, we'll say 40 millimeters. I'm going to make this 3.5 millimeters wide and 1.5 millimeters thick. So we're back to all about our original size. Go into tab, hit the tab key to go into edit mode. Put your cursor over the object and press Control R and then I'm going to do 200 loop cuts again. Press enter twice. Go back into object mode by pressing the tab key and now I can take this, come down to jewel craft, select my curve, the, you'll notice the bar is still selected, hit ring size, I'm going to select a size 7, press OK and it does basically the same thing. I'm going to apply the modifiers by pressing function A, apply all modifiers and we have our ring back. One thing I also like to do is apply the location and scale. So I will hit function A and come down to rotation and scale. If that doesn't work, try control A. You can also get to that menu the same way. So here's my ring. It's a size 7. And now what I want to do is I want to put 10 diamonds across the top. To do this with Mikhail's tool or jewel craft, we're going to go back into edit mode. 
Oh, actually, I'm going to get out of edit mode. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to select my ring size. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit to about here. Press 1, and you can see that the sizing object or the curve, which is labeled size, is just outside the circumference of the ring. So I'm going to bring that in just a little bit more, right about there. So it's above our ring. And now I want to with that ring selected, and it is a curve object, you have to make sure it's a curve and not a plane object. I am going to add a gem, and let's say I want to add in, he's added a new thing to this in 2.5, you have carat selection or millimeter size. Okay, so let's select our size. We're going to make that a little bit bigger, right about there and I'm going to add in a gem and we're just going to make this 0.1 or a 10 point diamond. I'm going to hit the OK button to add it and there it is and I want to make this go around our ring size curve so with the gem selected I'm going to hit the curve or our ring size labeled right here and I'm going to hit scatter along curve and you can see it puts 10 stones around the perimeter of our ring and now I can make changes to them by coming down to this little box here and I can say 10 stones is fine I want them to be flat so I'm going to do negative 90 and now they're flat all along the perimeter now you can see they're sticking out just a little bit I'm going to offset those just ever so slightly down so that they're sitting along the ring. I'm going to go out of perspective view and into uh, using my keypad, press the one key so I'm looking at this ring from the side. And now I can use the scattered percentage which uh, in Jewelcraft allows us to pick a starting point and an ending point. So where do I want it to go? So I'm just going to go around the surface here until I get where I want to be. So with 10 stones, I want it to be approximately like that. Now the cool thing is I can increase the, uh, the end and start point on these stones. Or I could just leave them the way they are. And I'm only showing you this in a simple form. So what I want to do at this point now that I'm happy, I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to select just my gemstones. So I'm going to show you how to do just one. Zoom in here and using Jewelcraft we'll come over to the Jeweling tab and we're going to select prongs. And you can see it adds two prongs there. Pretty, pretty slick how he's done that. And now I can choose how many prongs I want. Three, four, five, six and so on. I can change these. So I'm going to go back to two. I can change their alignment. So if I hit the three on the keypad and I can kind of look at this from the side view and then say what position do I want these in and I can rotate them around just about like that. We can change the orientation by hitting the alignment and you can see I can change my orientation there. I'm going to go back to zero and depending on where you want those if I wanted them on the sides I could do that which is pretty common. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line them up like this. And there I have one prong. Now I want to get out of this because I'm going to show you how to add all the prongs along all of these. Control Z. I'm going to press each diamond. And this is just a quick way of doing it. You can, you can practice on your own. Hit the first diamond, hold the shift key down, select every other diamond. So with all 10 diamonds selected, I'm going to hit prongs on the jeweling tab and it adds two prongs per diamond. Now I'm going to select the position of those. And I'm actually going to put them here. And I'm not too concerned if they overlap a little bit because to be honest with you, when I 3D print that, it's going to look fine. So now I have my prongs set. Now I'm just going to select one diamond just to show you this. And now in, in the Jewelcraft tab under Jeweling we have Cutter. If you select Cutter you can see it puts 
a prong cutter in and it'll actually create a hole through the band. Now this is pretty cool because I can zoom in here and look at that and we can change the size, the top length, the bottom, or the cut there. Uh, on the girdle we can change the girdle thickness, we can change the offset, and the bottom part of the girdle. And then on the bottom hole we can change the size, how thick we want it to be. You never want it to be <clears throat> larger than your diamond. I'm going to make this 2.5 and then we have the length of the hole that we want and the detail. So how much detail do you want in your cutter? Now with that selected, the cool thing about this is I can click the cutter, hold the shift key down and click on my ring and then using the bool tab, the boolean tab, I can come down for edit. Under the edit tab, we'll select difference and you can see it actually cuts a hole through the ring. That's pretty slick. Now typically when I'm using Jewelcraft now that I've been using it for a couple of weeks, I'm going to command Z out of that. We're going to get rid of this prong or this cutter. When I'm using Jewelcraft, what I like to do now is actually select all the prongs and add them to my model by joining them with the boolean tool. So I will select the prong, hold the shift key and select the ring and then click union. Then I'll select the next prong, union, the next prong, union and so on. So until I get all of my prongs attached and I, select, I suggest you do these one at a time because you can run into issues with Blender's array trying to select 10 things and use the union tool. Sometimes some of the mathematics gets a little off and you end up with goofy little things happening. I'm going to hit tab and just make sure everything is set and you can see all our prongs are now added to our ring. Tab go back into object mode and now I'm going to select each diamond one at a time with the shift key. So all I've got selected are just the 10 diamonds. Now I'm going to go back to my jewel craft tab, select cutter and you can see it's added in all 10 cutters for the diamonds. I'm going to make the bottom size two and a half millimeters 2.5 which makes the bottom just a little bit larger and now I will select each cutter and the ring so I'm going to select the cutter then the ring and then I'm going to use the uh, in the edit tab the difference tool on the boolean and I'm going to do that one at a time select the cutter select the ring use the difference tool select the cutter select the ring use the difference tool. And you're going to do these one at a time just to make sure that they all work properly and you can see the holes are being made properly now in our ring. It does take a little time and uh, there is another add-on that uh, apparently Mikhail has written called Bulltron. I've used it a couple of times but it's really screwed up some of my models here and there so I tend to do this the old-fashioned way in Blender and it's working good for me. So now here's my ring. It's basically just a squared off size 7 band with 10 diamonds in it and that's what we've made using the Jewelcraft tool. So this is part one of of modeling with Jewelcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you like it, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to cover a couple more things over the next series of videos for these so that we can see a little more detail and actually what you can do in about a half an hour. You can make a pretty fantastic ring using the Jewelcraft add-on for Blender. Um, again, all the links are below. So where you get the add-on and you can go look at um, Mikhail's page see if you can you know, make heads or tails or follow my tutorials that I'll be doing on Jewelcraft. Thanks for watching guys.